Hello everybody. Uh, today I would like to talk a little bit about the personal mobile radio service. Personal, uh, personal mobile radio service is a very simple European system. It's a set of eight channelized frequencies set aside for license-free walkie-talkie communication use. Uh, the frequencies are from 446.0 to 446.1. Um, it's a European standard, so it's common across the whole European Union. Uh, half a milliwatt of power, five, sorry, half a watt of power, 500 milliwatts. Uh, the radios come hard-coded with the channel, so although they're the, you can go from channel 1 to 8, but you don't see the frequencies because they're hard-coded into the firmware in the radio, uh, you just simply choose channels 1 to 8, which uh, it's a simple system. Very, very simple. They're walkie-talkies, and they're popular with businesses, families. I'd see a lot of shops using them, and people who just don't want to pay for uh, their own frequency and uh, their own private mobile radio service or people who just can't afford it i've also seen a lot of hikers using them and even motorcycle driving instructors sometimes you, i hear that around dublin where the the instructor's got his trainees behind him and he's talking to them using these radios and they've got little headsets um simple system i've even seen children's branded versions of these like i've seen a spongebob and disney versions of these so i'm sure that makes the business users really happy to hear kids screaming but it's, it's, it is what it is. It's a license-free service which was uh, set aside to let people go crazy. Now, to make the system safe, all the equipment sold for use on the service has to be type approved. And type approved basically means locked down to all intents and purposes. So like I said, you can't see the frequency. You know, there's no frequencies available to you. You just have channels 1 to 8. So if I switch this on, it starts on channel 8 and... For this is a weird radio, but I don't know if you see it. Uh, how do I select a channel? Oh. Seven, let's see. I might actually have to come back and oh, calling. I actually forget how this works. That's scam. Never mind, I'll come back to this anyway once I've actually read the manual. But anyway, you got eight channels. Uh, each channel uh, is locked to a frequency set as, no, this, that's been defined by the European Union. And you buy the radio for anything from 20 quid upwards. There's, these are cheap versions, which were 20, 30 euros, and you can pay up to 100 for like a ruggedized business version. Uh, now, the thing is, because they're type approved, the antennas can't be changed. They're bolted in. Uh, there is a derogation available in the legislation to allow certain countries to introduce removable antennas and the UK is the only country that's done that so far and I'm assuming that's because like in the big cities you know these little rubber ducky antennas is would struggle with to even get down the street with all the big build, buildings you get in like the likes of London or Birmingham or Glasgow so that's but the antennas that they the replacement antennas also have to be type approved so you can't just build your own antenna <coughs> so yeah it's a simple system in the states you might know it as the family radio service and the family radio service is virtually identical except for the frequencies it operates on uh and also it has 14 channels instead of 8. But the family radio service operates from 462 to 467 megahertz. Uh, also half a watt of power on each frequency. And like to be honest with you, these, pro these radios here and the family radio service radios probably come off the same production lines in the Far East. The difference is different firmware with different frequencies built into them. That's probably the only difference. So um, very similar systems. But anyway, what I want to talk about is how to improve the reception performance of these radios. Uh, a byproduct of this, it would also improve the transmission performance, but you don't want to go there because that would be illegal. So, like I say, how you use inf information is up to you, and if you choose to misuse it, then be it on your own back. Uh, to start with, I'm going to talk a bit about some radio theory. I'll keep it quick. Uh, the rubber ducky antennas in these radios are compromised antennas, in that uh they exist to allow the antennas to be smaller the by what the trade-off is that you get reduced output power so if you think back to my videos a video a few months back about standing wave ratio and i must apologize for the noise there's a bit of a storm brewing outside but if you catch your mind back to that video i was talking about how when you transmit on a specific frequency there is a sweet spot antenna size for that frequency where the most amount of energy you're putting into that antenna gets dissipated into the environment uh, and and if you want to uh, use a smaller antenna for the frequency you're on 
you have to use either an antenna matching unit, which is an antenna tuner unit, tuning, tuner unit or modify the antenna in some way. And one of the ways you can modify the antenna is by putting in a choke or inductor in line. And what that basically does is it allows the antenna to be used on a lower, a smaller antenna to be used on a lower frequency because generally the slower the frequency, the bigger the antenna. Now in these cases, these radios are UHF radios, so if you wanted uh, a straight monopole, which is like a whip antenna, the sort of antenna you would see on a FM res receiver radio, like broadcast radio, it would need to be about 30 centimetres long, which would be impractical. So you'd either have to keep putting it up and down every time you wanted to use it or put it in your pocket, and it would get broken eventually. It wouldn't be very durable. And in the case of uh, VHF, which is down, right, down around 140 to 160 megahertz, it would have to be a metre long. And those VHF is more desirable for business radio users because it's better range. So sometime in the 60s, I believe, uh, Motorola came up with the concept of the rubber ducky. So what it does is basically means... Uh, the, the it's just an inductor and the way it works trying to work a good way of trying to explain this to you simply so basically if you are using an antenna that's too small for the frequency you're on what will happen is the energy will go into the antenna but it will literally bounce back into the radio and that could potentially damage the radio but it will also hit the the next frequencies coming through if you know what I mean and distort the signal so you'll either get damaged the radio or distorted signal so what an inductor does is effectively dissipates the excess energy as heat. But then some of the radio frequency signals do get out. So although you're putting 500 milliwatts into this antenna, you're not effectively getting 500 milliwatts coming out. Uh, that's, that's just the price you pay for having a rubber ducky antenna. So how do you improve that? You use an antenna that uh, doesn't uh, need to be... Uh, have a choke in it or an inductor to just signal. Now the most simple version of that is a dipole. Uh, now this will make the whole thing a little bit unwieldy, but here's a very simple diagram. Here's a little radio, here's your length of coax. Uh, a dipole is, at its most simple form, two legs of metal and attached to the coax in the centre. So I've got two legs 100 and 161 millimetres long because uh, the ideal length for a uh, dipole is achieved using this formula. So this is metric. I'll put a link to the, the Imperial version in the description. So you take 150 times A. Now A is the free space ratio. It's something you don't really need to concern yourself with. You only would use that if you're building a really serious antenna. For I just use 0.96. The free space ratio is basically trying to take into account how thick the antenna wire is. Uh, because that affects how the energy dissipates. But we're just going to go in 0 0.96 as a default. And then you divide that by the frequency of megahertz. So in the case of the, the PMR, I'm going to take free channel number 4, which is 446.14375 as a sort of me median point. So 150 divided by times 0 0.96 is 144 divided by 446, and you end up with 32.227. Divide that by 2 to get the length of each leg of your dipole, you end up with 1 point, 0 0.161 meters, or 161 millimeters. Simple. So these two legs are 161 millimeters, and I'm connecting them into a chocolate blocks type antenna uh, connector, which are one of the these two hickeys here and and we're going to screw it onto a piece of wood and then you hold the antenna you would hold it up vertically so you wouldn't have the legs like like this you'd have them like that so because the system is vertically polarized uh and i'll put i'll put up a uh, if you want to do this for some other kind of radio reception i will um put a link in the description and also for the imperial measurements there's some, there's some really good online calculators to do the sums for you on this so i'll link to them in the description so what do you need to do this right first of all get a piece of wood any kind of piece of wood will do uh for the antenna itself uh i'm actually using an old wire coat hanger um this is steel if you can get copper or aluminium even better because copper and aluminium is actually a much better conductor of electricity i would assume steel is steel's good steel works but ideally copper and aluminium is better uh, tools, what you need the chocolate blocks, you need some uh, ply a good pair of pliers, um, wire strippers, side cutters, wood screw. We're going to be soldering. You will need uh, one of these BNC plug type things here. 
which uh, I will be fitting to the radio. Um, a little bit of solid core wire, you don't need much. Uh, your soldering iron, your solder. Uh, what else do I need? Um, a multimeter is handy for continuity testing. Oh yes. Um, now, to connect the antenna to the radio, you could just get a piece of coax. I'd recommend RG8X and stick your own BNC plug on. I'm cheating. This is actually, um, I got this in Macklin's and this is actually uh, an oscilloscope probe. But that's perfect because I've got the two ends here and that's just what I need. It's all ready to go and it's nice and neat and I don't have to go through the hassle of fitting a BNC plug because trust me, fitting BNC plugs is not a pleasant experience. Oh, also, uh, a circular file might come in handy for tidying things up and a good sharp knife. Mr. Stanley knife for even called box cutters across the across the way. So let's get started. As I try to tidy up here. The first thing I'll do is I'll just I only need two of these. So I'll just uh put down and I'll put that to one side. My daughter's watches a video called um, Cookie Swirl C. It's basically a lady who tests toys in the most annoying fashion imaginable. She sings and she screeches and uh, kids love her and she's got like four and a half billion views. And I'm just like, how does she do it? It's crazy. Right, so let's open it up. Now the first thing to remember is if you are, if this is a rechargeable radio, you might have some Instead of sort of regular batteries, you might have some dangling terminals here. So try to remember where they are in relation to the unit, because if you put them in the wrong, back in the wrong way, they might get the polarity wrong. <coughs> Pardon me. You find that the wires tend to sort of just drop out of these things. Uh, tease out the antenna, and let's see. There's the unit. There's the the ducky. Hmm, it's actually copper. I'm genuinely surprised by that. Oh. It's soldered on. Ah, that's the first time I've seen that. So, I'm not going to take this apart too much because I don't want to have the hassle of soldering back too much. I think I might need some solder wick. So, basically what, what we need to do is... Uh, we're going to take the, two, uh, the bit of wire here. Sorry. I'm going to take this BNC socket and we're going to leave it here. Now you'll find that it actually fits in quite nicely. Although there will be a bit of cutting required because there's some notches here and the lengths. Uh, and I'm going to fit that there. And I'm going to attach one, the centre pin of this to where this antenna is attached here. And I'm going to attach the outer pin to a, a ground plane on this board somewhere. Which I'm going to use the multimeter to find out where it is. So the first thing I need to do is remove that antenna. So I'm going to need my solder wick. Oh, well, closer inspection I've discovered is there appears to be some kind of epoxy holding this down. They're getting serious. So that kind of makes me um, wonder about how I'm going to attach this on. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to snip it. Uh, because the solder was melting, but it wasn't being picked up by the wick. I was losing my head there, so it turns out, yep, there's some kind of very thin layer of epoxy, and I don't want to snap it off because I might snap the copper trace off the board, and that would be bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip it here. And attach the wires to that. So, um, the next thing you need to do is... Uh, get your continuity probes from your multimeter and see if it works. Find a grounding point somewhere in on the circuit board. So what you do is you attach that one probe to where the negative of the battery terminals is here. And find somewhere in the board where you get a continuity. Uh, 
Well, as you can see here, there, this uh, cover has grinding. Now the question is, will it take solder? Uh, let's see, what is that? Well, there's solder on it here, so yeah, it takes solder. So, before we continue, I would like to fit the BNC socket. As you can see, it kind of fits, but there's a little notch here, which is where, which keeps the antenna straight and stops it twisting, because there's a hole on the back of the rubber ducky there, and that's what goes in there. So what you need to do is kind of clear that away. That's why this, the Stanley knife and the fire might come in useful. Fits nicely now. I've got to do the same on the other side. Perfect. So, let's see how this all fits together. I'll be as careful as possible not to do any damage because they do have a tend tendency to throw it all together and in a way that's never going to be changed again. I don't have the buttons in, but that doesn't really matter because. So, oh look at that, now there is a bit of a, a lean as I put it in, but I'm not too worried because I can just epoxy this in even though it's loose, it's hitting against the antenna, so if I just pull that back, let's see what I can do. I do have a problem with uh, the screw mount causing a few problems, but I can work around that. That's what epoxy was invented for, to, to deal with stuff like that. So, um, the next thing you need to do is take your le length of wire and say, I'm going to cut it about four inches, and strip each end. Solid core is better if you can get it, it's easier to work with. And this end I'll just cut a little bit longer. That's going to be the negative end. So one end is going to be uh, to attach the central pin of the BNC connector to where the old antenna was. And this is going to attach it to, the, the other longer one's going to attach it to ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently Spread these out a bit. Oh. What's that saying? It's a, an alarm reminder I set to turn off an alarm reminder. So, the way this works is for the, the center pin. actually trim that a bit more. You generally just shove it in the hole. Take your pliers and just press down as hard as you can. And sometimes that's not good enough. So had a little bit of a incident there. The battery on my camera went dead and I didn't notice. So uh, sorry for disappearing there. But anyway, I got these wires soldered onto the BNC socket. So um, the next thing to do is to get it soldered onto the board of the radio. So uh, trying to figure out the best way of doing this. So this goes in here like that. This is where it gets a bit tricky. So as I line it up with a screw hole there and see what sort of room I've got. Not a lot. 
what I think I will do is let's see you know something I'm looking at this now and going I could have just soldered that straight on there actually no I couldn't focus the positive pin is quite close the center pin is quite close to the the old antenna um, I'm gonna to have to leave this sitting up quite high when I put it in unfortunately so what I'm gonna do is trim this down a little bit more just a little bit I don't want any stray wires coming into contact with it and solder my center pin onto it mm. so I've done is I've just twisted that around there so it's a uh, not going to fall off let the soldering iron warm up well I have a cup of coffee ah, nice coffee there's my solder there we go oh unfortunately I've managed to cause the speaker to come off so I am um, sorry the speaker to disconnect which is unfortunate, but uh, uh, what can you do? Um, so the next thing I need to do is solder the outer, the, the sleeve of the BNC port to this place, this uh, pad which I tested earlier for negativeness, groundedness. So I want to fold that in there like that. I want this to be nice, as neat as I can get it. And I might, uh, and I also want to, I want to leave enough room and enough length so that I can open this up and work on it without too much trouble. Because if I cut it nice and short, yes, it'll be neat and tidy, but it'll be impossible to work with. Oh, there we go. Uh, pretty poor soldering job, but we got there in the end. Uh, so the next thing I need to do is actually resolder uh, the wires onto the speaker. Now, unfortunately, these are very, very thin and pretty rubbish wires. So I'm going to replace those. So where is my spool of wire? So what I've done is I have soldered on a uh, centre pin to the where the antenna used to be. Uh, I've soldered on the outer shield to this uh, grounding point and I actually put some new wires in the speakers because the speaker wires were terrible. So hopefully I've got them the right polarity. If not, I'll have to go and change them. Uh, I'm going to do a quick test. So I'll put the batteries in, get the rubber buttons and press the power button here. Yep, looking good. It switches on, it makes a sound. Excellent. So what I'll do is I will take the batteries out and then start reassembling this as best I can. I might have to use the super glue. Oh, oh I've lost the battery. Uh, so let's see how we're gonna do this. Put the buttons back in. Should go in easier than this. Then the unit again, because I put longer ca antenna ca uh, speaker cables in, I might have to do a bit of fiddling around to get it to fit, but that looks okay. Yep, yep. And uh, I need to. Slot in these. Now these are the charging cables and I hope I got them the right way around. 
I'm pretty certain. If not, not a problem because I'm not gonna. I will test the polarity before I actually charge. And so there we go. So so far it's looking good. And what I'm gonna do is just push that in, see how far I can push it in and seal the unit. Hmm. That works quite well. So I think I'm gonna do is twist that around. I don't want the risk of the wrong thing touching, so I might have to twist this around so that the center pin faces the antenna port. So that's a negative, I had it the right way around. Oops, that's better. So, buttons are in, that's in. The center pin is facing the antenna side here. Put the lid on. Charging ports are in. Sorry, charging contacts. Oh, one thing I did forget was the button. Can't forget that. Wait, it'll still work. It's not a waterproof unit. It's not like one of these IP67 things. You pay a premium for those. Carefully put it all together. Oh, that's what's holding it up. So what I'm actually going to do is just going to put a screw into it and hold it all together. And I'll probably do it up here just to be on the safe side. Screwdriver. Better screwdriver. I'll do one down here as well. Yes, that is my children you can hear. And I'll give it one more test just to be on the safe side. You can always keep checking and testing. Like I didn't do enough uh, continuity testing in terms of contact wires getting in touch with each other, but um, you should. There was a lack of sound. Hmm, that's not good. Let me have a look. I sneak in suspicion I may have snapped one of the audio leads. Well, they're both attached there. Ah, uh, there we go. I might need to put a little bit more solder on that. Unfortunately, they got the the solders. The solder pads are on the wrong side from the speaker but I'm sure there's a man that's probably why they use the really thin cabling because it was easy to fold round okay fixed it <sighs> test it that's better so we have sound now Uh, put the button in. And carefully, probably put it back together again. Which, as we all know, in this world is always easier said than done. Before putting in screws, going to give it a quick test. Sound! Yay! Sound is good. 
screws. So what I'm going to do is probably just with this, I'm not quite sure, I'm probably going to epoxy it in when I'm ready, but for now I'm just going to leave it sitting there because I'm going to build the antenna and test first. So I'm just going to put two screws in. For now. Hmm. Make sure the side button's working. Perfect. Now the antenna side of things is considerably easier. Basically what we need is two lengths of metal. Steel works. This isn't what uh, coat hanger, but copper or aluminium is better. There's one or two millimeters wide. You don't have to worry too much about the width for this. Uh, and a ruler. So, I don't want a good pair of pliers. So this part's gonna be easy. So what I'm gonna do is, get my, actually I'll get my uh, less good pliers. I have a rigid, use a better pair of pliers. So I'll just cut it here. Check the length. And we're smidgen over. I'm just gonna get it as straight as possible. Just so it's accurate. See what we have. 170, oh, 180. I can take a fair bit off that actually. I'm just going to start trimming a bit off at a time. Hundred and seventy one exactly. Bang on. So now I'm going to get another one. Another length of wire. And uh, pretty much do the same thing. But I'm going to use the first one as a template. So I need to get it as straight as possible. See, like I say, what's more important than a accurate length is they're both the same length. They're both the same length. Bang on. So that's it. That's all you need. There's not a lot to it really. So what we need to do is bend a centimeter back at a right angle. So I'm going to eyeball it here. And just go like that. That's about right. And the same with this one. Yep, back in the butt. So that's it. That's the legs of your dipole sorted. Two bits of metal, like that. Uh, now this is an some sort of anodized stuff, so I need to sand this down or rub it down. So what I'm going to use is a, a file. You can use sandpaper or glass wool, whatever. You need to do this in order to make the a connection. Okay, and uh, there they are, two ends filed down. So we got bare metal. Um, get your chocolate block connector and a flathead screwdriver. There's going to be one. Uh, yep, there we go. Like I said, this is a lot easier than the the radio modification. Screw them in. So there you go. Simple as that. Now go back and get my uh, cord that I'm cheating with and screw that in below. You actually might find that using a smaller chocolate block connect connector might help you because they do come in various sizes. This is rated for 30 amps so the size is kind of rated to their current 
so like a 10 amp one will be smaller uh, and might be easier to work with it's up to you like I say this is a very inexact project though there's nothing but dealing with five watts of power it's not gonna sorry 0.5 Watts of power is not going to really do a huge amount of damage. Uh, I will check continuity on this. So I need to get the meter in. Switch it on, go to continuity. So I want to make sure the outer shell is continuity there. Yep, yeah, but not here. Want continuity positive. And stick the pin in the middle to check for continuity with the. But not with here. Good. Because if you've got stray wires touching, that will break the whole, cause the whole thing to fail. Um, piece of wood, where are you? Now there's a bit of argument whether the, you should mount it vertically or horizontally. I am going to go with vertically just to be on the safe side. Now the beauty of this, the wood won't have much of an effect on. The antenna's performance, so it'd only really be an issue if there was metal in there or something like that. There, so I've got to get put the screw in there, and I need a dirty old woodworking screwdriver. So I'll just leave it halfway screwed in, so I can do some testing. Um, so yeah, we're almost done. Uh, where's the radio? Here it is. Because it's not properly screwed in, I'm just going to be very careful. Not sorry, glued in here, so I'm just going to be very careful to attach it. And uh, switch her on. Now this is Sunday in Dublin, so you're not going to get very much. So here we are. There's the antenna. There's the radio. I put a little super glue in, so hopefully that will take hold in a second. Although, however you fix that onto there is up to you. It might fit in nicely into the radio. If not, I'm probably going to come back and put a bit of epoxy in this. Uh, I'm not going to do it just yet because I want to make sure everything is hunky-dory first. Um, but just to show it works, and you should never do this at home. I've got a license that lets me do this. Uh, using the old uh, Icom R20 communications receiver. It's the scanner, basically. And I've gone channel 4, and the frequency for that is 446 one four three seven five and i transmit there we go and i can put on to the the calling tone so it i think someone's giving off to me there so what i have here is an antenna that will dissipate the full half milliwatt of power that this thing generates the rubber duck antenna you lose some of that power because the rubber duck is a compromised antenna this will dissipate all the power but to get best performance you should just ha have this high up this is something i wouldn't call a portable antenna but stick it on the back of your house or whatever and you get perfect receive like i said don't transmit on this at all don't do that so um yeah that's the gist of it so what you do is take out the antenna you have find a grounding point put in a bnc socket Attach the center pin to where the antenna was. Attach the outer sleeve, the outer side of the BNC socket to the grounding point. Check that you haven't damaged anything along the way. Put it all back together again and build your antenna like this. Hope you find it useful. And like I say, don't transmit. You shouldn't be doing that. Okay, cheers. Take care. Bye-bye.